All right, guys, welcome to Take Your Base. I'm your host, Flav Oriana. And uh, wow, so we're right now in the ALDS. Just finished watching a game between the New York Yankees and the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, better rivals in the AL East. The last week we ended up having the the wild card. I told you guys, um, what's it called? Uh, learned my predictions. Buffalo Blue Jays were not going to beat the Tampa Bay Rays. I believe I predicted the Cleveland Indians to win. But boy, I was wrong. Ever since that performance that Shane Bieber put up against Garrett Cole, nobody. And I mean, nobody thought that match between Bieber versus Cole was going to end up being like that. The Twins, I had expected them to win. But the Twins do Twins like like stuff. Ended up losing to the Astros in two games. Predicted the White Sox not, not to advance to the ALDS. Oakland ended up overcoming in three games. I ended up picking... Like I said, dark horse, the Marlins. The Marlins were going to upset the Cubs, in which they did. They haven't lost. Uh, they, well, they, they're they facing the Atlanta Braves at this point. Predicted the Padres to, you know, overcome the Cardinals. Got that right. Obviously, I had picked the Dodgers to make the, to win over the Brewers. That was a clear and obvious choice. So yeah, so now we're in the ALDS. So I'm going to only talk about what happened between the Rays and the Yankees. So, just concluded uh, Game 3. Game 1 was a matchup between Ian Snell of the Tampa Bay Rays versus Garrett Cole the, uh, of the New York Yankees. Garrett Cole is their ace. Ian Snell could say that he's uh, one of three aces that the Tampa Bay Rays have. And... Garrett Cole looked like a monster. He looked like he had deserved everything that he ended up getting this past all season by the Yankees. That ridiculous contract, that three hundred million dollar contract, looked like he deserved striking out eight guys, looking dominant throughout the throughout the the game. Ian Snell fell victim of John Carlos Stanton, who has been on fire. He has been on fire throughout these playoffs, and who would have thought? The way that he had played throughout the season. I know he's been hurt. Very fragile. But if he continues to do what he's doing in the playoffs. I mean. The money that he's earning will be well worth it. So game one. The Yankees. Um, it was a close game. Garrett Cole ends up leaving the game. And uh, top. I believe it was what the top of the eighth. Or if not the top of the ninth. The Yankees just ended up scoring a barrage of runs. Um, John Carlos Stanton goes and ends up getting that dagger shot, the dagger hit that it was well needed, ends up hit getting a grand slam, uh, extending the lead to the point where the Rays weren't going to come back and uh, be able to get a victory. The Yankees win uh, 9-3, if I'm not mistaken, game one. If, if I'm, like I said, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, if I'm right or wrong? Yeah, 9-3. Game two. It was a matchup between what's it called? Yeah, like I said, the Rays and the Yankees. It was uh, Tyler Glasnow versus I think it was Devi Garcia, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. Uh, box score. Yeah, Devi Garcia and Tyler Glasnow throughout the season. Throughout the you know prior years, look phenomenal. I mean, what what do we what do we expect with the Rays? I mean, they have very good um, player development skills. You know how to develop their players. Tyler Glasnow looks like a stud. You know, you need these type of you, you need good pitching come um, into the postseason. I know hitting is always going to carry, but pitching is going to be able to you know get you into the next rounds, get you victories, get you, get you winning. These small little battles that ends ends up coming close to the primary goal, which is winning a World Series, which the, the Tampa Bay Rays has has never done. The only ever the only other time Tampa has gotten close 
was in 2008 when they ended up facing the Philadelphia Phillies. That was it. That was the only time they got really close. Other than, other than that, they haven't gotten close. But getting back to the 2020 Rays, yeah, Glasnow was a monster. Glasnow uh, pitched five innings, got 10 strikeouts, only allowing uh, three hits, four runs. Yeah, it looked phenomenal. And then uh, Fairbanks ended up closing the deal out, getting uh, his first save of the postseason. postseason. But yeah, um, Tampa ended up answering back, tying the the season the season series. I'm sorry, the playoff series one one. Now going into Game Three, it's a matchup between Masahiro Tanaka versus uh, Charlie Morton. I thought that this was going to be the matchup that. Whoever wins this matchup is most likely going to end up winning this, the series. Just because it's a best out of five. And whoever loses doesn't have much time to recover on the mistakes that they ended up doing in prior games. Plus, it's going to be very, very hard to win two games as opposed to just needing that one victory. But stranger things has has happened. <sighs> yeah, so Masanero Tanaka ended up pitching. Um, didn't do so well. Only pitched four innings, allowing eight hits, five runs, allowing one walk with four strikeouts. Didn't do didn't do well at all. I mean, you would have thought that his usage would have been able to carry over at least maybe to the sixth inning, but no. I mean, Aaron Boone pulled a plug. He it was the right thing for him to do. Me personally, I don't see him as a great uh, manager. He's just been dealt a really good hand, and it's impossible for him to mess it up. Uh, on the other hand, look what Tampa's uh, starting pitcher, Charlie Morton, did. Pitched five innings, allowing four hits, two, two runs, one earned run. So one of those runs were, was not earned. Um, giving up two walks on, with six strikeouts. Dominant. I mean, he looked pretty well. And then that Tampa Bay um, Rays bullpen is outstanding. It's lights out. It's going to be very hard to compete with that. Both the, both the Yankees and the Rays um, have very, very good bullpens. But whoever was going to get the lead and then hand it over to the bullpen was more than likely going to end up winning the game. And boy, what a barrage that they ended up uh, doing Tampa. Getting 13 hits, uh, scoring eight runs. I know they had two fielding errors. It's gonna happen. Can't be always perfect. But yeah, Kevin Kiermaier doing his thing. Uh, Choi doing the first baseman doing his thing. Austin Meadows, you know Willie Adamas. I mean the the team doesn't have superstars. Like I said, they just have people that know their roles and they're gonna fulfill them. I feel personally, Tampa Bay reminds me of the Oakland A's of out east. Oakland A's don't have a high budget. They don't have a high payroll. Bob Melvin is a genius. He knows what he's doing. He's able to make you know lemons out of lemonade. I'm starting to feel confident that I can easily put Kevin Cash in that same category, if not just one notch below because... Kevin Cash doesn't have a high payroll. He's just giving whatever he's, he's given, and he's making the best out of it. And look, the Yankees have a star that studded light them. They have a huge payroll. Ended up giving Garrett Cole this past season over $300 million. You're going to have to pay Judge. You know, Stanton's on a ridiculous contract. That he's, in the tri- he's trying to live up to it. I mean, what he's doing right now in the playoffs is definitely helping him out. Masini Tanaka, you know... Is, is getting paid pretty well. The The differences between payrolls between the Yankees and the Rays is like night and day. It's like different universes. And yet, Kevin Cash is able to, you know, figure out, um, ends up pulling out his pitchers at the right time, putting his, his hitters in the right possible moments for them to succeed. And Aaron Boone of the New York Yankees, he just seems like that manager that was just dealt a really good hand and doesn't know how to use it. But when you have a really good hand, eventually you are going to win. And I think that's what we're seeing with the Yankees. I could be wrong. Uh, do I see that the Yankees are going to be able to bounce back from this series? No, I do not. 
tomorrow starters. Yes, they do the face. Yes, tomorrow they have a game at seven o'clock between Jordan Montgomery and Ryan Thompson. That's who they're saying that's going to be pitching right now. Uh, it is subject to change. But as of right now, if I had to pick anybody, um, I'm going to go with Ryan Thompson, you know, getting the, the better over uh, Jordan Montgomery. Jordan Montgomery hasn't been the best pitcher. The the Yankees, uh, I don't know. I mean, this is like their elimination game. They should really try to figure out something out. Maybe Jordan Montgomery might be a, just be like a person that starts two innings, you know, Boone takes him out and puts in like Garrett Cole or something like that. Uh, that's just ideas that possibly he should listen to. Uh, Ryan Thompson, don't know much about, but I, if I had to rely on coaching, I'm going to rely more on Kevin Cash over Aaron Boone. Kevin Cash is, is willing to at least place players in better positions. Aaron Boone, he looks lost. He's all in that bubblegum. That's all he's into. Bubblegum, bubblegum, bubblegum. But, uh, yeah, the uh, Yankees lose one more time. They're done. They're eliminated. And then the Tampa Bay Rays will be moving on to the ALCS. Yankees win tomorrow. They'll force a game, fi- uh, yes, a game five on Friday, which will be win or take all at that point. And then the winner of this series between Rays and Yankees would be moving on to be to face the Astros versus the Oakland A's, which right now that series is two one. Um, Astros. Like I said, stranger things have happened. Somehow the Astros are this far and they're one win away from making the what's it called? The AOCS. It's, uh, baseball's, a, <laughs> baseball's a great sport and we just can't we really can't predict the outcome on these type of things. But last thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say for these Yankees to really improve and they want to have a good fighting chance, they're really going to need to get some good starting pitching. I don't know what Brian Cashman's going to end up getting. He's going to have to do some type of a trade. I don't know what fool. But whatever you do, t- Brian Cashman, please do not make any transaction with the Mets because we're not willing to give up. Any- Unless you want to take Steven Matz, then you know, be my guest. I mean, I can speak for most Mets fans that Steven Matz is- should no longer be a uh, a person in that organization. He has played horrible. So if you want to fix the scraps on him. Be my guest. As for the Rays. I think what they're doing is is outstanding. Should probably, they should definitely try to retain back. Uh, Charlie Morton. Hopefully he doesn't re- retire. Getting a big bat out there. Would be huge. I just want to know like how that would fit. Between. The Rays, you know, Rays, Rays management doesn't like to spend that much money. I think getting a big bat, spending a little bit, a little bit of money, would help out the Rays a, a, a huge amount. But yeah, uh, tomorrow's uh, like I said before, tomorrow's game four. Uh, it's a winner going home for um, for the Yankees. Tampa just needs one more win to go into the ALCS. I know a lot of you. Um, Casual baseball fans that just don't tune in for the postseason. You guys want to see the, the the most basic matchup ever. The New York Yankees versus the LA Dodgers. I guarantee you that's going to get tons of ratings if that was ever to happen. My opinion, I personally want to see. I want to see the Oakland A's versus the, the LA Dodgers. It's a battle between California. I, I love what's going out there in Oakland. If Tampa gets there over Oakland... I wouldn't be upset. Just definitely don't want to see the Astros make the, um, make it to the World Series because we don't know what's going to happen. And definitely don't want to see the Yankees uh, get any further past than the ALDS just because of me being a very biased Mets fan. But uh going to shorten the video. I'm going to have to get going because uh, it's got a lot, got a lot of stuff to do for tomorrow. Going to have... More predictions on. I mean, I'm gonna give you my predictions, my opinions on for this Saturday's fight night. I'm gonna give. Uh, we're gonna have an episode with me and Hav for uh, dropping dimes. 
right before the game starts. Uh, we have a game tomorrow for, and for the NBA Finals, Game Five. It's in Miami Heat versus the the LA Lakers. Uh, Lakers are one win away from capturing uh, another title in their illustrious uh, history, and Miami is just trying to survive at this point. But w without further ado, you guys have a good night, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, take your base. Please like and subscribe. You know, gonna be making more videos throughout these playoffs. I'll cover you know tomorrow about the Padres and Dodgers series. That's a very exciting matchup. I'll cover the Astros and A's as well tomorrow. Astros and A's uh, play tomorrow at 3.35. I'll try to get it in a video right before, you know, like 12-ish. And I'll definitely talk about the Marlins and Braves. Right now. Uh, Braves are up to nothing with uh, one win away from making it to the NLCS. They play tomorrow at, uh, at 2 o'clock, so I'll try to get in Oakland and the Oakland Astros series and the Marlins um, break series right before these games start tomorrow. All right, guys, you have a good night. Uh, peace and love, guys. And please like and su subscribe to the channel. All right, guys, have a good night, guys. Bye.